All right, hello, I'm here with uh, Logan, the head distiller from Lone Elm Whiskey, and Brandon, the boots on the ground. Um, we are going to have ourselves a little treat and taste what Logan's been producing, um, which is Lone Elm's wheat whiskey, their small batch, and then their single barrel. Uh, I will let Logan explain what wheat whiskey is, though, so while I'm pouring. Our whiskey is 90% soft red winter wheat that's grown locally here on the Trinity River Valley. And then 10% malted barley for the enzymes in order to convert the starches and the wheat to the sugars that the yeast like. And then this whiskey is five years aged in 15 gallon barrels. So it's, it's very dark and rich, very heavily matured. Um, oh yeah, you can kind of see that color. There's no there. colorings added in GMOs. Yeah, it's all natural. It's, so what can, I mean, it's not a bourbon, but you do age it in new charred oak barrels. Correct. That's right. Right? All right. So considering, I mean, typically with bourbons, you get the same vanilla caramels because of the corn and stuff in there. So with a wheat, what is it we can expect? It's going to be similar as far as the oak taste because the barrels used are the same, but the underlying grain flavors are different. The wheat kind of gives it a more smooth oily sort of mouthfeel that kind of it kind of rounds out the burn of the alcohol on the on the back end of the note um, so this is just me but in the nose I get fruity pebbles I'm not even gonna lie I get bananas there are lots of fruit okay flavors bananas in there. yeah, yeah no so it's got right, a lot right of fruit flavors in it yeah. you know I've, I've generally before someone said banana you know that's just like a suggestive smell that you know oh yeah I can smell it now but like I've always gotten you know like a little bit of a leather aftertone the cassis the dark cherries you know ambrosial flavors mm -hmm. well and they're definitely more dark fruits for me than there probably is banana but like I said my first instinct instinct is fruity pebbles right. and because of that's the sweetness that I get from you know that what would be the vanilla and stuff from the barrel imparting on it but I get all those fruit flavors mixed and so mm -hmm. it's almost like this blend of yeah. sweetness fruit and so which that's is, which made me think of fruity pebbles yeah it's amazing because if you think about how artificial fruity pebbles is right but there's yeah, nothing for, artificial about no. this yet you get the same sort but of yeah flavors. i was gonna say we got Pretty the crazy. same flavors i mean it's just uh and so this is 90 proof too right Correct. and so you're not getting which i find interesting and neat is that is it, I don't know if it's the wheat or I mean it's a you know an homage to how well you're distilling it, but I'm not losing nostril hair uh, yeah, whenever I smell it. Mm -hmm. So I'm not getting just pure alcohol coming straight up my nose. I'm getting more of the scents and the flavors to it, and so that's something that is worth noting for anybody that's looking to try this. Um, all right, so now what do we? So we talked about the nose. So in the flavor, you said it's going to be a little bit mellower because of the wheat versus mm -hmm. more like a rye, which is going to have a lot of the spice and black pepper notes to it. Right. So. Mm. It is good. Those fruit notes carry over. Mm -hmm. um, not, it doesn't taste like fruity pebbles, but I mean, the notes are, the you get hints of fruit, but you do still get the, whiskey finish i mean you can tell that it's whiskey you're getting the oak and the tannins from the barrel which is what i guess what i mean by the whiskey finish mm -hmm. um without it being overly strong i mean you're not getting burned as you as you drink it um there's some, another flavor there and i'm not sure exactly what i'm missing I, I taste the wheat. I mean, I can taste a little bit of earthy dust, almost like, you know, sitting on my back porch growing up. Uh, we had a wheat field right behind our house and almost like, you know, they were harvesting the wheat. It's yeah. almost kind of what I can get a little bit out of that. That's all I can smell when, we're, when I'm in the distillery. So Yeah, no, that uh, makes sense. So, well guys, uh, oh, so this was the um, small batch. So now we also, they also have a single barrel. Um, so, the single barrel, so talk to me about what's different with the single barrel versus the um, small batch. Yeah, so when we're making our small batch, we're typically pulling several different barrels from roughly the same batches, and then we blend them together in a tank before proofing it down to 90 and making our small batch. But when we're doing that, if we come across a really, really good barrel that we think can stand out on its own, is particularly good, then we just 
We bottle it as is. We don't proof it down. So this is bottled with cash strength? Things. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is 118.7 proof. Okay. All right. Well. So, and like right up, you know, right now in the market, you know, we have, like I said, we have anywhere from 108 to 125. So I know a couple, a couple package stores, I sent the 125 over just because they requested it. But. Well, I mean, I can tell you right now that, I mean, the difference from a nose perspective between this and the small batch is those those flavors are amplified. Yep. Uh, I mean, it's like it takes everything and just kicks it up a notch. Right. Yeah. It's going to be a lot more volatile because it's a higher proof. So you're going to get a lot more of an intense nose yeah. on it. To me, it's a, it's a lot more chewy as well. You know, and I, I tell people whenever I, oh, go, yeah. whenever I go to certain events and I'm doing tastings or anything like that, you know, I always describe them, you know, what a great food whiskey this is. I mean, it's very complimentary to, you know, a lot of different foods out there. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I can totally see that. I mean, because of the higher proof, it definitely gets a little bit more spice right there on the front of the tongue. Mm -hmm. um, but the rest of the flavors are amplified as well. You're right. It is a lot more oily um, and a little bit more chewy from that standpoint, but not in a bad way. I mean, I think this would pair really well with a um, medium body cigar, um, something that has that same kind of leathery and, um, you know, dry notes to it. This would be a great way to complement that. And, and I'll tell you what, we make a fabulous uh, cigar infused uh, smoked old fashioned with that single barrel. That's just... Oh, really? Yes. Cigar infused old fashioned. Okay, we're gonna have to talk about that later because that is something I'm very interested in know, learning more about. Uh, cigar infused old fashioned. Who would have guessed? I've done a lot of things, but that one I have not done. Okay, all right. So now I'm sidetracked. Um, but no, guys. The both whether you're choosing the small batch or the single barrel, it's a solid choice one way or the other. Um, this is a unique whiskey that is worth trying and you know keeping on shelves um like i said it's if i'm not mistaken the price point's pretty relatively um comfortable like uh, 40 dollars somewhere yeah, in that range 40 42.99 to 46.99 42 to 46 so you know it's medium priced um uh, but you're getting a four to five year old um whiskey for that price that is exceptionally smooth um and just something unique out there on the market so give it a whirl um and check these guys out at the 2019 texas whiskey festival logan brandon thank you for your time thank you cheers cheers, cheers.